Hello, welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. I'm Scott Manley, slash Sean Connery. Actually, my name's Kevin, but you can call me Unky Kev Kev. And today we're gonna start things off with some odd developments happening with Starship. Then we'll get our hype on as we discuss the many upcoming SpaceX missions in our near future. We'll briefly talk Crew Dragon, then we'll finish things off with today's honorable mention. Let's get started. Elon Musk's September 28th Starship presentation is just dub weeks away. And so workers are working around the clock to complete the Mark 1 prototype and meet Elon's timetable. That final fuel bulkhead I pointed out in our last episode is now installed inside another hull ring and has been capped off as it prepares for placement atop of Starship's lower half. That troublesome nose cone has been raised to prep for its next mating with the top of Starship's upper half, and it looks like it's seen better days. The launch site, which formerly belonged to Starhopper, is still undergoing a massive overhaul as it prepares to receive Starship for its 20 kilometer flight, currently scheduled for next month. SpaceX must be confident that they're going to meet these aggressive Starship deadlines because they're still dedicating manpower to the Super Heavy booster. In Boca Chica, the jigs that will hold the booster parts in place during construction are coming along swimmingly, and in Coco, many more Super Heavy hull rings have appeared behind the workshop. But now, SpaceX has made the decision to throw their fan community into utter chaos. Just two days ago, what appeared to be an earlier generation of the Merlin engine was spotted being offloaded at the Boca Chica site next to Starship, which obviously requires Raptor engines. Some speculated that it could be a Raptor vacuum engine, and while that does sort of line up with the projected dates Elon tweeted about four months ago, the exterior plumbing and overall size deems it a Merlin that was meant for the Falcon family of rockets. So most of us are assuming that it's probably going to be a display piece for Elon's presentation. SpaceX is continuing the development of their new operations center at Kennedy Space Center. Michael Baylor tweeted this NOAA-SAT image of the site. It's likely that the Starship construction site in Coco will eventually relocate here for easier transportation to the launch pad. Japanese billionaire Yazaku Mayazawa, who last year helped SpaceX fund their Starship development program, is selling his online fashion retailer Zozo to Yahoo Japan. Last year, Mayazawa purchased all the seats on the first Starship that's going to circumnavigate the moon for his art project he calls Dear Moon. But don't you fret about Starship's future, because according to Mayazawa, his reason for selling wasn't due to financial trouble, but that he could devote more time for training for his lunar trip in 2023. But now let's transition into non-Starship SpaceX missions that are coming up. And this is really exciting news, guys. This week, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell spoke at the World Satellite Business Week conference in Paris and made some very interesting claims concerning the future of SpaceX's launch manifest. She hopes to launch 24 Starlink satellites next year alone. And although I'd have to check my math, I believe that equates to two launches a month, totaling 1,400 satellites at 60 sats per launch, which is what they will need to do in order to meet their deadline of almost 12,000 Starlink satellites in orbit by November 2024. But concerning the rest of this year, Shotwell is quoted as saying, if some customers move out, I'll have some Starlink launches, maybe up to four Starlink launches this year, but we won't push a customer out for that. So we will wait and see what the end of the year looks like and see what we can fit in. And concerning the current lull in launches, she said it's not due to SpaceX being behind schedule for once, an issue that sprouted from the days of 2015 and 16 when SpaceX had two catastrophic launch failures. Instead, however, now SpaceX is finally waiting on their customers to be ready for liftoff. Shotwell also announced that SpaceX entered into contract to launch 703BM power communication satellites on two Falcon 9 missions no earlier than 2021. And furthermore, a Sawacom 1B Earth observation satellite will be launching next February. Dude, <laughs> things are about to get intense, man. Two Starlink missions per month on top of whatever other missions SpaceX is going on for those months and Starship testing. Oh, and don't forget, we also have the Crew Dragon in-flight abort test coming up. Parachutes! SpaceX tweeted a nice little compilation video showing the testing that they put Crew Dragon through since it's spring anomaly that destroyed the first one that went to space. Apparently, they tested the spacecraft Super Draco engines over 700 times since the incident. And although the investigation is currently wrapping up, it was noted a couple months ago that the plumbing for these engines was most likely responsible for the cause of the explosion. These Super Dracos are so powerful that they can move the Dragon capsule over seven football fields in seven and a half seconds, reaching a peak velocity of 436 miles per hour. They should turn those paddleboard tests into amusement park rides. Sure, you might crack a rib from all the Gs, but worth it. Now let's get into our honorable mention. Okay, so a long time ago, I did an honorable mention on Bigelow Aerospace 
and how they purchased tickets for Falcon 9 rides to the International Space Station. Well, now they're back, and it seems like things are progressing for Robert Bigelow and his company as they continue to push for the stars with their inflatable space habitat technology. These modules get compressed enough to fit inside five meter payload fairings, and then once in space, are inflated with onboard gas canisters. In 2016, their small Bigelow expandable activity module was installed on the ISS, and shortly after, they looked into doing the same thing with their larger B-330 module to test it out and maybe use it as a place to put their future space tourists. And then after a few years, detach it from the station, add more modules to it, making its own commercial space hotel. But it seems the ISS thing isn't going to happen anymore. Founder Robert Bigelow commented this summer that NASA and Northrop Grumman were negotiating instead. So now Bigelow Aerospace is currently looking for further opportunities in deep space. One such example is NASA's Lunar Gateway that is planned to begin assembly in 2022 as part of the Artemis program to get American astronauts back on the moon. Then just this week, Bigelow claimed that if NASA greenlights the B-330 for the Gateway, they could get one ready for launch within 42 months, which would place it on top of a rocket in 2023. Further aspirations for the company is to build bigger inflatable modules and place them on the moon and Mars. Inflatable space hotels? Sounds awesome. Maybe Elon is onto something. Maybe we're all just living inside of a video game. Obviously that video game is Kerbal Space Program. Okay. Ah! No, no, no! Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Y'all come back now. Godspeed. These SpaceX in the News episodes are made possible by the generous donations of my Patreon members. And if you'd like to see even more space-eccentric content, consider becoming a patron yourself. Even a dollar a month will get you access to exclusive videos not available here on YouTube. There's a link in the description. And God bless, my friend.